I'm not kidding, it has been less than 10 minutes and look at the water difference between these jugs. Today, we're gonna to be answering some questions about leaves in aquariums with a few experiments. One of the biggest questions that a lot of us ask and I've had a lot of messages is what leaves produce the most tannins in our fish tanks? So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I've got a few leaves and we're gonna be doing some experiments to see which one of those leaves produces the most tannins. All right then everyone, so here we have five individual jugs. They are all one liter each. I got some very funny looks from the supermarket when I got these jugs, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd make the experiment as fair as I can. So they're all the exact same jug and I'm gonna fill each one of those up with a liter of boiling hot water and we're gonna put the leaves in. So what leaves are we gonna be using? Well, let's take a look. All right then, so let's go through them. So we've got five leaves. All of these leaves can be placed in fish tanks or vivariums or any other sort of natural setup that you want. If you put them in water, they all produce tannins and some of them have some other health benefits, mainly antifungal properties and sort of natural healing things. A very popular ones are the jackfruit leaf and the catapa leaf. So let's go through the leaves first of all and just see what we've got. So the first one here, is your standard oak leaf. Uh, they're very common around the United Kingdom, so we've got plenty of them, so I thought I'd try one of them. Next one up is a magnolia leaf. I love the look of these leaves. They're very uh, brown and a really nice texture there. Next up is a black pepper leaf. I love the style of these leaves and the cool uh, patterns and colors on them. Next up, you've got the jackfruit leaf. This is one of my favorite ones to use in the aquarium. I love the color of them. And lastly, we have probably the most popular leaf in the aquarium hobby, which is the catapa leaf or the Indian almond leaf. They're very popular with better keepers and shrimp owners for a lot of their sort of natural healing properties for fish. Okay, so what we're gonna do is get these leaves in some jugs of hot water. So I'm gonna boil the kettle and get the jugs filled up. Additionally, if this is your first time learning or knowing anything about aquarium botanicals, then click the link up in the top corner to watch a couple of my other videos on how to start in the sort of botanical side of the hobby. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five jugs all filled up to the one liter mark as best as I can. So let's put the leaves in and see what happens. All right then, so all the leaves are now in. As you can see, a lot of them, as with any botanicals, naturally float until they are waterlogged and sink. It's only been a few minutes, but you can already see some significant changes to the water, specifically with the catapa leaf here that is leaching loads of tannins already. And it looks like, with my eye, nothing else has been changed for any of the other leaves. So it definitely shows you so far, after only a couple of minutes, the catapa leaf makes a massive impact on the water color. So why are we doing this experiment then? Well, a lot of people like to keep leaves and various other botanicals in their aquariums to create more sort of natural environments for their fish. Sort of, it, there's plenty of benefits to it, like more natural behavior, sort of helping with spawning, natural food source, also, there is a lot of natural sort of antibacterial properties that can sort of come from leaves and stuff like that. So there's tons and tons of benefits from it. Also, some people really enjoy that sort of tea stained look of their fish tank. And sometimes you don't want to keep putting lots and lots of botanicals in your aquarium over short periods of time because there can be problems with like pH levels and stuff. They can sort of swing quite badly if you, if you do that or they can cause bacterial blooms because leaves and other botanicals is classed as additional bio load, 
which effectively means that it's like adding another fish to your fish tank. It's creating more sort of bio load on the filtration system. So if you add too much and your filter is too immature to handle it, then it can cause bacterial blooms and give you other sorts of problems. So some people like to just find a botanical that maybe produces a lot of tannins and then use that in their fish tank. So either pour the water in if you, if you do it that way or put a very strong leaf that produces a lot of tannins into the aquarium and that can give that sort of same effect without adding too much to it. So that's the reason I wanted to do this, is to find which one is the most effective. All right, quick update, I'm not kidding. It has been less than 10 minutes and look at the water difference between these jugs. So the Kitaba leaf is definitely winning by a, a mile compared to anything else. The rest of the water barely looks affected, especially the oak leaf down the end. Okay, everyone, I just wanted to check in quickly. It's been two and a half hours now since we first uh, started the experiment. And I just wanted to give a quick last minute update before I go to bed, because it's very late. And what we'll do is check up again in the morning. But yeah, look at the Kataba leaf. It is so insanely much more tinted than the, the rest of the bowls. The only other one that I can see is maybe the magnolia leaf there is a little bit more of a sort of a darker tinge and the black pepper one may be a little bit but the jackfruit leaf marginal and the oak leaf is absolute none to be fair the oak leaf is a lot smaller than the rest but yeah still the katapa leaf seems to be winning by a long shot so what i'm going to do is go to bed and then we will catch up again in the if you're enjoying this kind of content from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Right, let's get back to the experiment and see what's happened. Okie doke everyone, it has been officially 24 hours now since this experiment has started and look at the results. So as you can see on the left, the oak leaf literally has barely made any kind of impact on the color of the water. From my eyesight compared to the camera, it looks absolutely clear as day. The next one, which is the magnolia leaf, is probably the most noticeable out of all of them besides the last one, where there's a slight tinge to the water, as you can see, sort of comparison there. Uh, the black pepper leaf, a little bit of a tint, but not too much to shout about. Same with the jackfruit leaf, I would say that it's probably a little bit weaker as well. And then by a absolute mile or a landslide or whatever you want to call it is the Kataba leaf. And that just looks like a huge jug of gravy or a bowl of soup or something. But yeah, I mean, it's safe to say that as a landslide, it certainly smashed the rest of them out of the park. It's safe to say that it's been quite an interesting experiment. I've really enjoyed sort of seeing what leaves have the most impact. I mean, you put them in your fish tanks all the time, but it's just really nice to see it sort of individually laid out. I think the thing that I've learned from it and hopefully shown everybody else is that clearly the Kitapa leaf or the Indian almond is the most effective when it comes to releasing tannins into the water. Now what I would say is these leaves have been placed in boiling hot water and then left to release their tannins. When you are doing this for prepping wise, I normally would boil them in a saucepan for example, and then I would pour out all of the excess water purely because a lot of the leaves might have contaminants on them or pollutants so it's always safer to pour the water out and then take the actual leaf itself and put it in the water but as you can see after a couple of hours yes there is tannins that you'd probably lose from the first boiling but still after 24 hours it, the leaf is still releasing loads and loads of tannins so it's probably the best one to use if you were putting that into your fish tank once you boiled it. We're going to be doing a, another similar video to this in the future going into a few more details like pH and sort of what effect it actually has on the water quality but for the purpose of this experiment it was more about the colour than anything else. What I would say is if you want to check out some more information on how to properly prep botanicals, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, you stay safe.